When we finally emerge from our homes, what will the new world look like? And what kind of cook are you going to be? There are distinct levels of cooks, and each of them has a specific way to climb to the next level. I'm going to share them all with you today, and I'll show you how you can level up your cooking under quarantine today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. We're live, of course, every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you're wondering about past Carefree Cooks episodes, well, they're on my Facebook page under the video archive on the left. Uh, you could also go see about 400 or more videos on my YouTube channel. And now you can follow along with what I'm cooking for dinner and how I did it on my Instagram channel as well. What is that? Oh, that is a whiskey bourbon shrimp bur blanc, uh, not whiskey bourbon, whiskey bur blanc shrimp sauce on salmon. It was unbelievable. Uh, find Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well. How am I able to cook things like that? Well, I'm a carefree cook. I, I create my own recipes and this brings friends and family together, although not lately. Uh, I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. Hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> I'm really concerned about you. I, I really am. I do not want a single carefree cook to be ill um, or to be ill and be separated from your loved ones or unknowingly making someone else ill. God, those are all terrifying possibilities. And that's why we are in our homes together. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're in our homes separately, but we're, we're getting together. We're keeping ourselves and others safe. Please do it. So I want you to make a promise with me today. Raise whichever hand you want <laughs> or a foot and make this promise with me. If you promise to follow the advice of the health experts, wash your hands, social distancing, stay at home, things like that. If you promise to be okay with a lot of inconvenience, because there's gonna be a lot of inconvenience, then I'll promise to you, I'll raise my hand too, then I'll promise to you that I will be online cooking and teaching and showing you as much stuff as I possibly can so you don't feel so alone. Okay, my promise to you, your promise to me, we can get through this together. I mean, separate, separately, but together, you got it. Look, I got a true or false <laughs> for you today. Here's the true or false. Tell me in the comments section below uh, this statement. Is it true or false? You should always bring meat to room temperature before cooking. True or false in the comments section below. Uh, so like I was saying a minute ago, what's it going to be like? You know, we've got some really tough days, weeks, even months ahead of us. But the good news is that it will end at some point. And unfortunately, the only thing that's certain for now is, is uncertainty. I mean, nobody knows how this is going to end. And I'll be honest with you, it's the uncertainty that scares me. I mean, <laughs> it's a whole new world when you can't get out among the rest of the world, isn't it? I mean, are movie theaters ever going to be the same? I have a feeling the entire movie industry is going to have to level up to its next incarnation. Maybe the movie industry becomes home delivery of first-run movies, like Netflix, you know, a paid regal cinemas plan. Got my own popcorn, got my own drinks. It sounds pretty good to me. Or let me ask you this. How are you going to feel about physically going to a store versus buying stuff online when this is over? These stores, they're going to have to level up. 
And they're going to have to change the way that people are now shopping. I don't know, are churches ever going to be the same? Will churches move online? How will religion and worship with people <laughs> without them congregating, without a congregation, you know? And plus, it seems like everybody's able to work from home now. So what are the corporations going to do with all the skyscrapers and the real estate that they used to occupy? I mean, these questions, how is everyone going to meet this challenge and use the opportunity to climb to the next level? And I'm going to pose the same question to you today because your cooking is already changing because your life has changed so much. And to start with, you are cooking a lot more. Now you're cooking every single night of the week. And that is a change in itself. And it's not just because you're a beautiful stock photo model who is also married to a beautiful stock photo model and because you have matching aprons and you just never stop smiling. No, it, it's because you have to cook the food at home, not because you're a stock photo model, you know? And even I like to have, get a break from cooking every now and then. I love to order sushi. Sushi, it never burns, you know? Sushi never gets cold. But now all the sushi restaurants are closed. And that just makes it another day that I have to cook at home. And it presents a challenge and an opportunity to all of us. And I think we should all take this time to see where you are in your own personal cooking journey. Take stock. What are your strong points? What cooking skills do you really enjoy? Which ones do you hate? What stuff do you hate doing? Is there something that you could do blindfolded? No problem. Or is there something that constantly frustrates you? Well, it seems to me that you might have some extra time on your hands, right? And this time spent, depending which room of your house you spend it in, can mean a big difference when we do return to the new normal. So if you spend more time in your living room with Netflix, there, there's going to be a different outcome than if you spend it in the kitchen leveling up your skills. Identify your strengths and congratulate yourself for being so good at it, right? But also be aware of your weaknesses and resolve to turn them in, into strengths by the time this is all over. It's leveling up. Let me explain what I mean by leveling up. Leveling up simply means solving an issue that's been holding you back, getting around a roadblock, and progressing further. I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid, I was a hockey player. I was a pretty good hockey player. I was captain of the team, traveling all-star and stuff like that. But you know what? I owed it all to Campbell's Cream of Shrimp Soup. That's right. I ate <laughs> this condensed in a can soup before every game because I thought somehow, I, and I don't know where I got this idea, but it, it was the perfect nutrition and it gave me the energy to play. And anytime I had a great game, I congratulated the Cream of Shrimp Soup. You add a can of milk, you heat the soup up, and suddenly, I'm like Popeye with his spinach, you know? <laughs> but eventually, and this is what happens to everybody, eventually, I, I, I became bored with just a can of soup and put some milk in it. It was really convenient, but I was starting to get curious about how I could make it even better. So the first thing I did, I remember, is I threw a piece of American cheese in it. I melted American cheese into the soup. <laughs> and it was good, but I know that sounds like something a teenager who knows nothing about cooking would do, but I liked it. And I went from convenience to curiosity. That's a level up in itself. But then I decided that the sh uh, soup needed some fresh shrimp. So I chopped up some shrimp, threw it in the soup, level up, right? Then I added a dash of heavy cream at the end. Oh, made it nice and creamy, level up. I topped it with Old Bay butter, a compound butter, level up. I started playing with the seasonings. I was adding dill. Uh, I was garnishing with a cooking sherry because it, it gave it a good smoky flavor. And eventually, I was so many levels away from that original can of soup, I created something totally new. And so many years later, when I graduated from culinary school and I learned how to make a shrimp stock, 
Then I learned how to make a true bisque by sauteing shells. I learned how to make a roux. I learned how to make compound flavors in milk. And I am looking now behind me so far down a staircase, so many levels since a 15 year old hockey player placed a mystical belief in a can of soup. That's what I mean by leveling up. From adding American cheese to a condensed can of soup, to being a culinary college professor, a certified culinary educator, and the proud leader of our community of carefree cooks, that's a lot of levels over 40 years. I had 40 years to do it. Let's start on you, okay? So the first thing we gotta do is identify which level you're on right now. What type of cook are you? Be introspective, be honest. Because the first type of cook that I was is the convenience cook, right? This is the person that mostly cooks with frozen foods, convenience items, packaged ingredients where you really just need to heat things up. Open the can of soup, add some milk, dinner, cream of shrimp soup, right? The focus of, of the convenience cook is just getting the meal finished, right? The, the really eating is the most important part. Cooking is not important, eating is important, and their favorite tool is the microwave, because that gets this done. The convenience cook might have a few meals that they can throw together, usually family recipes that they've been eating forever, but, and, and that's okay. You know, again, I'm not making any judgments because it's safe, right? These tried and true recipes, they're comfortable, they're convenient. But this type of cook, they spend more money on food than any other, yet they enjoy it less. Their food budget is highest, their food enjoyment is less. And really, my advice, what this cook should do, is step up to the next level. And the way you do that is to focus on the four effects of heat on food. Once you start understanding how cooking works, and what happens when you apply heat to food, what happens when you cook something, all of cooking changes. And when you become proficient at just one basic cooking method, do the same thing again and again. And when you get good at it, I normally recommend the nine steps in the basic saute method to start, but you could pick grilling or braising or steaming. It, it doesn't really matter. But when you start cooking the same way over and over again, using the ingredients that you like, then you got something different. And then you start progressing to the next level, you start leveling up. And a convenience cook will eventually level up because it's not sustainable, especially in the environment that we're in today. Eventually, this cook is gonna get bored of the same cream of shrimp soup, of the same meals, and they may even start to realize that there are health benefits or health effects of eating processed foods or healthy foods. It, or they might just get tired of spending all that money on food and they're gonna start to wonder what they are trading for this convenience. That's what I always ask people to ask themselves. What are you trading for the convenience? And then, I, again, no judgments. You may be a very busy person with kids and all kinds of responsibilities. I understand that. But ask the question because once you start asking questions, then you're the second type of cook. You're the curious cook. The curious cook has developed a, a genuine interest in cooking, but at the same time can identify their skill gaps. And what normally happens to the curious cook is that they make a mistake. The catalyst for this is a mistake. There's a recipe or there's a dish that they've made a few times that suddenly it comes out crazy, you know? It's like, whoa! What happened to that? It is so different than before. And you taste it and you're like, oh my God, that's good. You know, I love the mistake. The mistake suddenly is the best part of it. Has that ever happened to you? If something comes out crazy, but you're like, oh my goodness, I love it. But you can't do it again. Yeah, I made a mistake bread many years ago. I totally forgot about the bread proofing in the oven. So it proofed, it blew up, the yeast died, it flattened out like a deflated balloon. But I was like, yeah, I'll bake it anyway. What the hell? It was so flavorful. It was so dense and rich that I started ruining all my breads. I started overproofing them to get that type of bread. It's the mistake that is very often the fuel for motivation. 
The mistake is the fuel for motivation. So if you start wondering, why did this happen? Or how could I make this happen a different way? How could I get a different result next time? When you start looking into the hows and whys of cooking, you're a curious cook. And I love my curious cooks. They're my peeps. They really are. They are the people fighting for freedom in cooking, right? They start to cook with a much wider variety of fresher foods. They start moving away from the frozen food section and their primary focus is away from eating, but their primary, primary focus is to be able to depend on their cooking, to get more consistent results. They want to figure out how they can do that and they start to perfect and even expand on those few family meals they were making before. Fresh shrimp goes into the cream of shrimp soup, slice of American cheese, eventually some cooking sherry. And that's why the curious cook starts to get really antsy, right? This is, this is the cook that can't sit still. They're gonna spend a lot less money on food, but they're gonna spend a lot more time in their kitchen because this middle type of cook, they spend the most time in the kitchen at all, of all because they're trying to figure it out. But this is an investment. It's not always gonna be that way because their frustration starts to develop and it starts to focus on the recipes that let them down. It's, they start to focus on the limitations and constraints and some of the false information they've been told and, and the fact that they're being told what to cook and how to cook it by someone else. They hate that. I hated it, you know? I always wanted to invent my own. And these people, they've traded convenience for recipe servitude in the past. And they just want their freedom back at this point. The curious cook is gonna step up to the next level. They're gonna level up to be more excited about their cooking, to remove this entire hit and miss factor. It's an amazing aha moment for people that I hear again and again, Chef Todd, suddenly there's no hit or miss to my cooking. When you develop that tremendous sense of pride that can come from cooking for yourself and cooking for others, Oh, it is so rewarding. And for this person, for the curious cook, how do you level up? How do you get to the next step? I always recommend combination cooking methods. This is a little bit more advanced cooking. Braising and stewing or searing and poaching are great combinations to learn about the effects of heat on food and how to make something really brown and caramely and, and crispy and nice while still making it really flavorful and moist. It's, it's a trick and a skilled cook can do it. So the curious cook's creativity is emerging and that's when they start to jump to the next level. That's when they level up because creativity is the name of the game and that's when you become the creative cook. And this cook is more confident than any other in how to cook. They've figured out that cooking isn't about recipes. It's about methods. They have a nice little toolbox right? or tool belt of cooking methods that they can always depend on. The creative cook is starting to see the entire process of cooking from, a, from an overview, you know, from a 10,000 foot level. They can, they can see it all and it starts to become fun and enjoyable and it's, it's their way to improve their relationships, their health and their well-being, like we say at the start of every Carefree Cook's Code. And, the, the creative cook is taking these few basic dishes that, when they were a convenience cook and they're really updating them with new ingredients and new creativity. My cream of shrimp soup started to get um, uh, like chili powder and paprika and cayenne pepper and I started experimenting with all kinds of seasonings. I, it didn't matter. There was no failure anymore. When you're a creative cook, there's no such thing as failure and generosity emerges. That's the other amazing thing about our Carefree Cooks community and what happens when you become confident plus creative. People who love to cook, people who are proud of their cooking, they always wanna share it with someone else. These are the people cooking for their neighbors now. Thank you. These are the people helping others in a really difficult time. And the main question in a creative cook's mind is, how can I make this even better? 
You start venturing out on your own. You start to develop your own cooking style. You have confidence to create instead of cook and you find cooking fun and rewarding. It, it's just, it's a great place to be. It's like top of the mountain. You know, you, you have pride in creating your own cooking mark. You start blending world styles maybe, F different foods you've never tried. You start putting things together into things that are uniquely your own. And this type of cook, they spend the least money on food because they prefer their own cooking, right? They grocery shop purposely. They grocery shop because they're confident that they can grab any ingredient and make something great out of it. And, you know, my suggestion to the creative cook who wants to level up even more and get to the next level is to study soups, stocks, sauces, and seasonings. Four S's, right? So at this point, you're a creative cook. You can probably perform, I don't know, eight out of the 10 cooking methods, nine out of the 10 cooking methods. You can do it confidently, consistently. But once you know how to cook well, the best way to level up your cooking is with sauces, herbs, and spices because the next level is all about being an adventurous and fearless cook, but that's something we're going to have to talk about another time because the level five cook <laughs> is a really magical place to be. If you're like Carefree Cook Level 5, and we got a few of them. We have a few of them in our Carefree Cooks community. I don't have to tell you who they are. You, you can tell right away by their photos. It's obvious. You could see. And, you know, again, I'm not trying to say that there's such thing as a bad cook or a good cook. There is no such thing. If you're a convenience cook and you love it, if it works for you because of the other responsibilities in your life, that's great. I don't ever tell people it's not good. Remember, if it's good to you, then it's good. <laughs> Nobody else tells me that. But you might have an opportunity here. <laughs> you know, There might be an opportunity right in front of you to level up your cooking. Have you always wanted to learn how to make bread? Have you always wanted to learn how to make your own pizza crusts? Uh, 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 you're going to start using your knife skills, breaking down whole chickens, whole beef tenderloins to save money? Have you dismissed poaching as a cooking method? Is this the time you're gonna make a perfect poached egg? Do you wonder about combinations of herbs and spices? Have you always wanted to make your own pasta and ravioli? Well, maybe now's the time to figure it out. And now that you've leveled up to the perfect poached egg, you're probably gonna need some hollandaise sauce for your first ever Eggs Benedict. Then you're two levels up, right? Is there a real desire in you to make healthy, good, wholesome, fun, rewarding, exciting, enjoying the kitchen food for you and your family, compound fats and butters, baking pies and cookings, making your own frostings instead of buying that stuff in a can. I, I mean, it's endless what you can accomplish if you use this time safely and wisely. That's the whole thing. Look, you're not trying to learn everything about cooking in the next month or so. That's not what I'm telling you. You just need to conquer one thing. Not everything, just one. Just that, that one thing that you've always wondered about, right? And once you do, you're going to take it along with you to the next level of the thing that you wondered that's been holding you back. Solve that, grab the two of them, up to the next level, grab a third, up to the next level, and so on. You don't have to see the entire staircase to take the first step. Martin Luther King. Look, um, I no longer like the idea of dish of the week. Decided I don't like that. It's not an award, you know, and I usually go through five or 10 dishes. It's just stuff that catches my eye. Plus we're not in a competition. There's no dish better than any other dish. So this week, it's the Carefree Cooks Collection on display. From now on, it's gonna be called the Carefree Cooks Collection. It is our collection of foods that maybe deserve to be in an ornate frame <laughs> and put on the wall. And you know what it is? It's uh, baking bread in our community, baking this week. Baking your own bread is definitely a level up skill because once you understand the 10 step yeast dough production process, 
only 10 steps in yeasto. You can make rolls, you can make pizza crust, you can make pretzels, you can make cinnamon buns, sticky buns, a whole bunch of sweet buns and confections. And this is Carol's. Carol's making mini loaves for herself so that uh, she can freeze them and use them later. Uh, Kathy went to the store, no tortillas there. So she made tortillas for herself. Had she ever done this before in her life? No, but <laughs> she has some serious carefree cooking skills. She's trying to level up. She figured she can figure it out. So nicely done. Bueno hacer. Nice. Uh, same thing with Liege. He's out of hamburger buns. So he made some. Not hard when you know how. Uh, you may never buy hamburger buns again. Th this, is, this is the level up that's happening. If your store is always out of hamburger buns, this forces you to make your own hamburger buns. I'm telling you, you may never buy them in the store again. Then you're a level up. You'll never go back down a level. You get it? Matthew, where is Matthew? There we go. Matthew's making his own donuts. How cool is that? Donuts are another yeast leaven product that you can learn how to make. Uh, Sherry made this fantastic whole wheat loaf. It's not very easy to do cooking with whole wheat flour. Uh, I'll give you a tip. You cannot make a loaf out of 100% whole wheat flour. It's just, it doesn't have a structure, but she figured it out. And of course, everybody wants to know her formula now. You can do this. I know you can, no, no matter where you are, no matter what you want to know to take your cooking up to the next level, we have a very kind and generous community of more than 10,200 or more people who didn't know what you don't know until they did know what you don't know. And now what you don't know, they would be glad to tell you what they know, then everybody knows. <laughs> I think <laughs> we will all level up. That's the idea. We all help each other. We want to help you. There's, th there's something that everybody doesn't know until you seek the answer and then you know it and then you're level up. You're the next level. Because these people, they got curious, then they got creative. And that's the way it works. Uh, the uh, what am I? Oh, uh, sorry, the true or false this week. It's not a what am I. Uh, the true or false is you should always bring me to room temperature before cooking. The answer to this is false. <laughs> Last week, we talked about fat tom and food safety. Food, acid, time, temperature, oxygen, moisture. Those are the six elements that create foodborne illnesses. Uh, time and temperature is when you leave food on the counter. There is no advantage to relaxing the muscle, um, letting the moisture distribute. It's actually quite the opposite. You want proteins to be stiff when they hit that pan. All of cooking needs to be dramatic reactions, not soft, low, slow ones. Do not leave your food on the counter overnight, especially if you have a tall dog, <laughs> but it is unsafe. You do not defrost things that way. You defrost in the refrigerator overnight, plan ahead. In an emergency, you can defrost in the sink under running water, under a pan of running water. That way the temperature of the water doesn't get stagnant. In a real pinch, you can use the defrost cycle in your microwave. Do not leave food at room temperature. Uh, it's just not a safe thing to do. Uh, you know, you can help someone else today. Uh, you can help them recognize the opportunity that's in front of all of us. And you can help them to become the next level of cook that they always wanted to. And all you got to do to do that is like this video or share it with them. Share it with your friends. And if you don't want to miss a moment, not a single moment of any Carefree Cooks Code broadcast on Tuesdays, did you know that I always send out an email on Tuesday morning? The email has the topic and the location of the class. And if you're not getting this email, you're behind a little bit. So go to webcookingclasses.com slash live to be included on my email alert system. Uh, look, I'm sure I'm going to see you really soon, probably cooking tomorrow night. Uh, check out my Facebook uh, Chef Todd Moore page between 6 and 7 p.m. I have to figure out what I'll be cooking. But if not, uh, we will see each other before next Tuesday, I'm sure. But next Tuesday at noon Eastern time, we're going to take another step toward breaking the Carefree Cooks Code. So this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your next level cooking success. Bye, everyone. Stay safe.